most people are fortunate if they can make it here once in a lifetime. Ultimately, everybody in this country owns this place, and it belongs to the Bears. This is their home. This is their grocery store. This is their kitchen. It's wilderness. My first view of Crescent Lake is just wonderful. Pristine, jade green. The mountains just come up out of the water. This place just takes my breath away. Flying in, not being able to drive on a road or in a boat. This is Alaska's adventure at its best. Crescent Lake is part of Lake Clark National Park. It's the people's land. All citizens should feel ownership in experiencing the wild, congressionally designated wilderness that exists here. It's all of our responsibility to be good stewards of the land. Clean water is key to any form of life. The goal here is to understand the water quality. Overall, this watershed is intact. It's clean water. It's cold water. It's pristine. It's good for salmon. They come up the river, spawn, and die. Those eggs will mature, head back out to the ocean where they will become adults. Then they'll come back and start the life cycle again with spawning. All of those nutrients that they have acquired during their years at sea get left in the lake system. It also feeds the bears, the gulls, the upcoming salmon population that's still rearing here. Crescent Lake has all five species of Pacific salmon. Those runs range from about 20,000 all the way up to 130,000 strong with sockeye. These fish are used for commercial fishing, recreational fishing, for subsistence. And they're also used by one of the largest densities of brown bears in North America. I always say, when we go to Alaska, we fish with the bears. It's just kind of a unique experience. I think I caught my first fish when I was like three years old in Finger Lake between Wasilla and Palmer. It's pretty remarkable to fish for wild salmon with wild bears walking around. But you also have to be cautious and respectful of the bears. You have to be careful with your stuff. If you can avoid having food out here with you, that's better. And you need, ultimately, to keep it in a locked, bear-resistant food container. You never know exactly what a bear is going to do. Give them a wide berth and maintain awareness. Got one. Earlier in the year, you can get into good red or sockeye salmon, and there are a few kings swimming around. But the big game here, for me anyway, is silver salmon. When you're in the brush, you have to stay alert. I like to make noise so the bears know where I am. If you're fishing and you see a bear, you should just stop fishing. If you have a fish on and a bear shows up, give the fish some slack, let it swim around until the bear goes away. And if worse comes to worse, just cut the line. When you catch a fish, store the fish in a container a bear can't get to. All right, little Dolly Varden. I'm thinking there's got to be silvers in here. We usually fish about four days and end up taking 40 or 50 pounds of salmon home. Pretty amazing. It's just kind of a unique experience to fish with the bears. 
clean fish carefully at Crescent Lake. You need to be sure that there isn't a bear in sight. Dispose of fish carcasses in uh, deep, swift water so that it'll be dispersed and isn't going to attract bears. Ultimately, we do these things because it keeps this place wild for the next people. I came over from Port Allsworth, actually, so over the range to come in for work. It's an amazing scene to be able to fly by the giant steaming vent. You can sometimes get the tinge of sulfur from the continued venting of the volcano. Crescent Lake itself is part of the big coastal system here. Our most recent population estimate was somewhere around 500 brown bears. There's pretty high density denning habitat all around here. But when the bears come out of the den, most of them travel through this country, heading down to the coastline, to the salt marsh meadows, which provide really good nutrition early in the season. So we get into late June, early July, we'll have sockeye moving into this lake area. So there'll be fish available, and the bears will start to move back to make use of those resources. Crescent Lake is very important during that salmon period. It's the foundation of the ecosystem that really allows bears to thrive. That's one of the reasons we have these amazing populations on the Lake Clark Coast. For most people, wildlife is something they are excited to see. But at times when you're coming here to fish and then a bear shows up, you can feel like it's kind of a hindrance. But realize it's a really important resource critical to these bears. You're in a wild Alaskan system, and the fact that a bear comes along, it's part of the experience. It's pretty awe-inspiring. First time I saw the bears, I was just in awe. They're just this huge animal. I've been impressed with how many sightings we can have here of wildlife doing what they do, uninhibited. I've been looking forward to see bears in Alaska since I was like 12 years old. This setting's incredible. It's a million dollar view, no matter which way you go. I've never seen a bear in the wild before. Now if I can check off a moose, I, I've got the trifecta going. <laughs> this is Alaska to me. When I'm out here taking pictures of bears, I definitely want to make sure I don't disturb them. That means giving them lots of space being quiet, staying in a group, and being aware of what's going on around me. I never approach or follow a bear. If a bear is yawning or popping their jaw, you should probably back off. Those are signs it's not very happy. Everywhere you look, there's a bear. You're a long way from help out here, and the water is shockingly cold. Even strong swimmers may not surface due to shock. So it's really important that you wear your life jacket. It's enjoyable to watch the bears as much as it is to fish. You can't ask for much more than this. Crescent Lake is a stunning combination of water mountains, glaciers, 
a volcano fish and bears. The desire to come to a truly wild place is something that appeals to people. And these are some of the last large intact ecosystems. The actions we have today affect the visitor that comes in the future.